Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that pike. Oh. Got him. Hooked up. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Wow, Good one. Well, look at it. He's Ooh. got it down his throat. Yep. That's a big brownie. He's black. Hello. Oh. Well, that didn't take long. Yep. We could, you got him? the socks of that thing. I'll tell you what, today ended up being a much more productive day than I know I expected it to be. We really pounded the fish. Walleyes, northern, big giant smallmouth. Given the weather conditions we were dealing with, I never expected it to be quite this good. I knew we would get some fish, but man, it was unbelievable. Once we fine-tuned everything and figured the bite out. Let's go back a little bit in time and we'll show you how the day went with the end result. Whole loads of these, plus a whole lot more. It shouldn't be sad. Man, am I pumped. We're on our annual spring trip to Northeast South Dakota. We base out of Roy Lake Lodge and uh, they, they refer to this area as the Glacier Lakes area in the Dakotas. And it's a whole bunch of natural lakes. And we come here every spring. I really look forward to it. It's one of my favorite trips. Ice has been out early this year. And uh, I know it warmed up really quick. It's been off now roughly, roughly 30 days. And in the last couple of weeks, the weather tanked again. It was really cold nights in the low 20s, cold rain, everything. I have no idea what to expect. Big storm went through here just a few days ago. You know, I'm talking 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, so these lakes are really riled up. But uh, we just got to get a boat in, Jer, and just start poking around, see what's happening, man. Actually, I'm going to start on this corner here. This is a contact point coming out of this deep water before you hit the flat. Yeah. There's a big rock finger that comes okay. off of here. You got a current pouring in back there. These fish will gather in here, usually really early in the season okay. here. Ba based on what we've seen in the, ha in the past, and now we got to go through the process of elimination sure. here kind of quick. Usually those fish are somewhere from four to eight feet. Sure. And that's what okay. they'll be in, based on the, the structure in this lake, the water clarity oh, we're yeah. dealing with, and the temperature being 40, so it's a little colder than I thought it was going to be. My opening bait is one of my favorite lures of all time for smallmouth, it's the X-Rap. Suspending jerk baits in cold water are always dynamite, so I've chosen a confidence bait to start with. They always got a shad wrap on, which could be another great bait, but uh, for me to start, this is going to be my, my go-to, and we'll just adjust as we figure stuff out along the way here. Got him. Hooked up. Feels like a Oh, he come oh, off, Jerry. Yeah. That felt like a smallmouth. That felt like a smallie. I felt the weight, really felt some weight on that. Bait was just sitting there, she come up, boom, just like the smallies do. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, and that feels brown. Does it feel brownish? It does, yeah. Ooh, is it big, a brownie? Oh, it's a dark one. Look a at that. Brownie? Oh, he is black. Hello. Oh, well, that didn't take long. Took we 12 did, minutes. <laughs> 12 minutes. 12 well, minutes. and half of it was searching. We, just pulled out onto more of a main lake saddle that cuts across the lake. He just dumped one. Oh, come here, Bubba. On a shad. And he's got this one in an X-Wrap, but the 
whole deal was we thought the fish were going to be up on that flat and it's cold this morning it's 39 degrees right now and it has been cold and so far we pulled out on this deeper saddle main lake spot and we've got two bites in a couple of minutes so maybe the fish aren't where we thought they were going to be so we'll play around out here and maybe it's some deeper deeper cuts close to flats where it's main lake structures where they just came out of their wintering holes. The shallow water right now might be a little unstable to hold big numbers of fish. Of your early season search lures, uh, we have three favorites and it's difficult to beat the x rap It's one of the all-time greatest smallmouth baits ever made for cold water. And I'm giving a little different profile throwing a shad wrap. And another one I'll come through with these fish when we're looking like this is a grub swimming a grub. This is kind of interesting with these fish still way, way out in a lake, not even near these spawning flats. This is a pretty big size structure. I'm going to poke around on these rocks here. I, 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 I punched that number in, I GPSed it, I locked that number in where he had those last two bites and I missed that other fish. When the water's really cold, the ticket to getting bites on smallmouth can be a long, long pause. If the water is, say, in the 50s, I'm usually not fishing with a bait caster, I'm fishing with a spinning rod and braided line with the same bait and I'm just pop, pop, pop. I'm making the bait just fly all around, really erratic. But when the water's in the 40s like that, this bait caster with the mono, it slows the action of the bait down, it doesn't throw from side to side as much. And I can also, I, and I just let it sit. I just let the bait sit. A lot of times two, three, four, five seconds, it's just sitting there and you go to pick up the line again and it's just heavy. They sit there and they look at it, they look at it, and then they just come up and kiss kiss the bait. They don't react to the bait the same when the water gets into the 50s, but when it's cold, a lot of times you can't fish this bait slow enough. The longer it sits like that, oh, the more brown bass you catch. Ha ha! So fun. Oh. He's got a spunky little attitude for being, being in the 40s. We're freezing our butts off and he's having a heyday. He's jumping and playing around and just having fun. Feels good once the ice is gone, huh, Bubba? Come here, come here, mister. I'm gonna hold you. He swung at that. Huh? Eh, not bad. On the X-Rap, and <clears throat> notice the color. There's nothing subtle about it. This is the hothead. My favorite color for smallmouth and muskies. The reason I think this color is so effective is it opens the strike window of the fish. Now if the fish are real neutral or negative and you're in clear water, a real subtle lifelike bait can be the ticket. But if you're in dirtier water and the fish are real aggressive and you want the fish to be able to see this lure, it creates almost a halo in the water and the visual cues that it provides to the fish is incredible. It just simply opens up the zone of awareness for the fish and where the bait is. So far, it seems to be working. Al dropped a waypoint on that little pot of fish that we've got, and it's so cool. He can drop a waypoint in the front, and I can see it back here with the waypoint management system on the hummingbirds. And it's so important to have that technology, but especially on a, on a spot like this, this is a pretty big, wide spot on this reef, and the fish aren't everywhere on it. They're in a couple particular locations that have the right, right bottom, and I've got it right here. It's a visual reference. I'm going to go ahead and cast to right about there. And hopefully that produces another brownie. By that grub, I can just tweak the tops of some of these new weeds here. I'm just going slow enough. You would think you get it in front of them, and once in a while, that's all it takes. Oh, another one! Another one! You know what? I got my answer. He's killing me. That's seven of them. <laughs> Ooh, it's a big one. That's it's a, a big, big sucker. One. Holy mackerel! It's a big one. I don't know how many. I haven't made a cast on this near this waypoint where I haven't got a bite. It's a good spot. <laughs> yeah, Look at that toe. Yeah, I'd say it's a good spot. Look at this tank. This is a tub. That's a big, big fish, and he's just got that bait T-boned. T-boned. Oh, hello, Mr. Brown Bass, huh? <laughs> this is an incredible bite. But the, the rods and reels that we're using to present these lures can have a lot to do with the number of strikes that you get. Let's go into some detail on why we choose particular rods and reels for certain presentations. 
The rod I'm catching the fish on this morning is a 6'8 medium action, fast action rod. I've got it spooled with 14 pound suffix siege, a monofilament. It's nice and stretchy. And then I've got it on one of these uh, exo reels. It's a 7.3 to one gear ratio. And I like that fast gear ratio because I'm jerking the bait and I want to get tight on, I want to pick up the slack quickly to get caught up to the bait so I could feel the strikes. And this mono I really like in cold water because again, it inhibits the action of the X-trap. It doesn't make it go as wildly. On the other hand, when the water gets warm, I'm fishing with the same type of a deal. This is our angling edge series of rods. I'm fishing with the 6.8, again, medium fast action rod, but you'll notice I've got braided line on here. 10 pound suffix 832 with the 14 pound fluorocarbon leader. And with this, with this braid in the, in the rod, I can just make this bait dance all over. And when a really erratic presentation is a ticket, you can make the bait far more erratic with this style, with the braided line and a spinning rod, way more than you can with the mono. But they each have their application depending on how aggressive the fish are. But right now, it's the X-Wrap on mono. We'll give it another pass through here, Jer, and then go check a few other spots. Something to think about, it's a mistake that I see a lot of fishermen make, especially this time of the year. Everybody's got their new boats. They can't wait to get out on the water, put them to the test. They get a brand new rig. They put the money into getting the motor on, the electronics right. They're rigged out with hummingbirds on the bow and the transom and good batteries and everything. And they chintz on the trolling motor. Always put the most powerful trolling motor and the best set of batteries money can buy on your boat. You will be able to fish in any kind of wind, any condition, anywhere. Oh, oh he yeah. was there. He was, yeah, yeah. Oh, he came back. No, it's a pike. That got to be a pike. No, no it's, it's a brown, brown bass. bass. Okay. He came back a second time. Right on yeah. the number. Right now on. I know what the trick is, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> I was throwing the wrong bait. <laughs> You know what? That is yeah, it. And it's a you double. got yours? Okay. It's a we're, double. we're right on the GPS number, whacking big brownies. Way out here. Loving it. Loving <laughs> it. The amazing thing about these smallmouth this time of year, when you do find one, there's usually a lot of them together. It's not a singleton typically here or there. It's where there's one pay attention market because there's usually a lot and they're big. Like, I got a real tub here, Al. You got it right in the forehead. So one thing about these fish, they swing in it a lot. Wow, that's a nice fish, isn't it? So many of these out here. Just beautiful. Look Ooh, at that, another that tanker, man. Wow. <laughs> Based on what we've seen here, Jer, I'm gonna show you, there's another spot. Instead of going up on those flats that I normally get a lot of these fish that I know they're gonna spawn on, there's another big saddle area like this way out in the lake. Yep. Down here, we're going to look at that and go across the top of it, just like this, right in the middle of it. In the old days, you'd have to drive around with your sonar, crisscross the lake, and hope to transect where one of these humps might be at a paper map. Well, with the new GPS technology and a Lake Master chip, we're able to eliminate water so quickly. There's no, we're not wasting any time. Al says, "Hey, I want to go fish this other spot that looks the same." We we fire up the motor, we drive to the spot. We're there, and we're fishing right on the spot on the spot and as long as it takes to drive, to drive there. We don't have to crisscross, look around. You're on the fish all the time. It improves efficiencies exponentially to catch lots and lots and lots of fish and be on the right spots all the time. Your baits are always in productive water using mapping to its ability. You know, swimming a grub like this is a great way to find these smallies on a lot of bodies of water when you're trying to cover water fast. At this time of the year, it's always an add to. You know, act, actually any time of the year on smallmouth water, I will try it. Uh, you know, and you just reel it real slow. Plain old curly tail, this is a Trigger X curly tail, four inch. You know, by exposed jig head, make a long cast. Turn over the reel handle and all you do is reel it back. Not jigging it. The more you jig this, the less smallmouth you're gonna catch. I got mine. 
hooked up. Oh, we oh, got a little my. honey hole oh, here. Oh, I got him, I got him. I don't get pike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another good, I don't know if it's brown or if it's, it's brown. Big one. brown. Oh. <laughs> you, you get your pike off and save your bait. Look at this, the, the pike don't, he, he, the pike don't like my smallmouth. You know, we're facing uh, a pretty stout wind here. I, I got out of it a little bit here in this corner. And, uh, you know, it'd be a little difficult to finesse. I can do it, but if they stay on this, this grub bite, I don't have to finesse. By finesse, I'm talking light, light lining a tube. Check this out. <laughs> We've got enough rods in here that we can be loaded for beer. You can fit one, two, three, four, five. That looks like about 15 rods in here. And I've been getting a few on the grub here, and I want to switch it up to something a little more finesse, and I'm gonna go with the number five shad wrap. I need to put a little fluorocarbon leader on the end of this, I'll show you how I do it. This is suffix 10 pound 832, and I'm gonna put just some 10 pound fluorocarbon on for a lead, and this is a really easy fast knot to tie, it's called an Albright. I just start with the fluorocarbon, which is my leader material. I make a little bit of a loop in it, look at he's got a fish on the front. Make a loop in it, Stick the main line, the braided line, through the loop. Pull that through about four inches. And then I, I take and wrap that braided line now over the two ends of the fluorocarbon about eight or nine times. Just like that. And I'll come back through with the tag of the braided line into right back through that loop. See that? Now I'll snug it up, moisten it with saliva, pull it down, get that knot to snug down nice, and that's it. That's an Albright knot, and that's a great knot. It goes through the guides really easy, and it works perfect for tying fluorocarbon. The other advantage to having fluorocarbon, fish can't see it, it's pretty abrasion resistant, but if you're getting nicked a lot, it's a lot easier to tie knots with fluorocarbon. You can tie you know, just a clinch knot or something like that with the fluorocarbon instead of having to do a loop knot like a polymer or some type of a super line knot. It's just a lot more efficient once this is on there. You know, we're, the spots that we're catching these fish in right here now are anywhere from four to six feet of water, a lot different water than we started on. And not naturally, these fish will eventually spawn here, but it's surely not in 46 degrees, they're not. And the thing that I've learned with smallmouth up north over the years that has amazed me is how quick, even after the ice goes off these lakes, and in the middle of winter, if you don't even have ice, there's days that there's some of the population will get way up in really shallow water. You know, not all the fish, but a lot of them. I've had it happen in reservoirs. You know, you get a sunny afternoon on pea gravel uh, uh, points and the water's in the 40s, you know, and you're catching them jerking or on hair jigs, uh, a drop shot rigs. Some of those fish get up so shallow, so fast, even in very, very cold water. You've got little pods of fish constantly doing different things. There is always some real shallow Right there, fish. working that little shad wrap. This feels like a big fish. Ooh, oh, it is. Man. It's big brownie. She's a, oh, look, oh. she's a pig. That is a pig. Oh, Jer. Just subtle. That's the biggest the, one so far, I think. It is. Ooh. <laughs> We started catching them on that grub, and I just thought about, well, maybe that straight retrieve up in the shallow water, just a real slow, subtle retrieve might be working. So I had a little number five chad wrap tied on, and it's the same idea. I was just working it real slow, steady, pausing it, and this big fish just kissed the tail of that tiny little bait. Oh, man. Really? <laughs> Oh, I got a little guy. Oh, look at this. Wow. You bit that little, little shed wrap and what a great, great deal. Al's getting them on grubs now. I'm catching them on this and that is a really big fish. For as cold as it was this morning, we found a lot of different patterns going on. We've learned a ton over the course of this bonanza of a spring day. In my local newspaper, there's a section called call Local and State. It just gives you an update of what's happening in the area. 
I want to read you a section in here that caught my attention. It's titled Non-Religious Community Meeting. A lunch meetup for the local non-religious community will take place at 11 a.m. April 29th at the Sunshine Kitchen and Moonshine Lounge in Brainerd. All atheists, agnostics, and free thinkers in the area are welcome to join us for casual conversation and good food. Now, an atheist is somebody that doesn't believe in God. An agnostic is somebody that says, yeah, there might be a God, there might not be a God, que sera, sera, it's no big deal to me, life just goes on, da, da, da. But when we got to the words free thinker, that really got to me because I consider myself a free thinker. I believe one of the gifts from God for all of us is we have the ability to exercise our free will. You could believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, or you can say, I don't believe anything in it. It's a bunch of baloney. You have a free will choice to make. I exercised my free will. I took time, I looked at the world around me, did a lot of looking into God's word, experienced what I believe is, is truth and power of God's word in my own life. I exercise my free will. I consider myself a free thinker. That is a decision I made. We have free will choices. Like I said, I believe that's a gift from God. I do consider myself a free thinker. You consider yourself a free thinker? I just thought those words were really strange in conjunction with atheist and agnostic. Had to share it with you. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.